love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Come on. I want you to understand today the Bible says that when brothers dwell together in unity their God commands a blessing I want you to understand you're in a blessed atmosphere right now there is a command of God and when God commands who can reverse I'm telling you you are in a blessed environment right now you're in a blessed atmosphere you need to draw on that right now there's a command of God right now we are blessed 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 right now. Hallelujah. Can we just do something? I, I'm here to introduce Pastor Warren, but let, listen, I, I just, I don't know, I just see something right now. I, I, you know that, what, what do you call that when you're like arm in arm, like a shoulder to shoulder thing? What do you call that? You know, when you're like this, brother to brother, you know? Like this, like this. Can we, can we just do that right now? Can we just do that and sing, bless the Lord, oh my soul? Can we just do that right now? Right now, I'm going to grab the brothers here, my bro. You're going to sing. Lord of my soul, oh, my soul. Hallelujah. Worship His name. We're in unity, Lord. Like never before. Oh, my soul. I worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you today, Lord, that you command a blessing, O oh God. We look to you, O oh Lord, and we thank you that the unity, O oh God, the atmosphere, Lord, the movement that you have started in April of 2014, O oh Lord, will not just be for two days or a weekend, my God, but we pray that there will be a supernatural blessing upon this time that will go forth from this place, Lord, from church to church and brother to brother in the city of Brampton, O oh God. We declare today that this city will never be the same, Lord. We put a stake in the ground for Jesus. We put a stake in the ground prophetically. And we say from this day, from this moment, from this Kairos moment, oh God, it will not be stuck in time, but it will progress and it will move forward and others will come and they will gather and the name of Jesus will be glorified and the city will never be the same again because Lord you have given us a dominion mandate to transform to change to go forth and declare the word of the Lord and all God's men said Amen. and all God's men said Amen. and all God's men said Amen. hallelujah praise the Lord praise the Lord praise 
Praise the Lord. Praise God. You may be seated. Well, my brothers, I couldn't be here this morning. I had another commitment to go to, but whoever posted some pictures on Facebook there, I, you know, I was in this other meeting, in this other conference that I had to set up, and, and I'm looking at Facebook, I see Pastor Brian Warren, who I'd never met, never heard. He's way, I see body parts flailing all over the place. I'm like, Lord, I got to get back to Brampton, praise God. So whoever that was, thank you. And before I got into the building, I heard how amazing he was. And here's what's amazing about the body of Christ. You know, we have an anointing on Pastor Warren. We have an anointing on Pastor Steve Fleming. They're so very different, have a different call, have a different word, a different style. But how many know that they're all part of the body of Christ? Amen. And how many know we need everybody in the body? Amen. So I'm just so excited. I said to Pastor Brian, I said, what shall I say about you? First thing he said, tell him I love Jesus. Tell him I'm a father. 16-year-old girl. And a husband, 28 years. Amen. That's what he said. And... Uh, Man, he's a big boy, eh? Like, if he has an altar call later, I might have to get saved. I mean, you can, you imagine if your pastor's a linebacker and he tells you to do something, like, do you just say, like, he'll crush you. I mean, you would just go, yes, Pastor Brian, I shall obey. He'll just crush you, man. Like, you, I got to bulk up. Anyway, praise God. Without further, how many have been blessed? You've been blessed here today. Come on. Without any further delay, thank you, worship team. We just appreciate you, love you. Thank you for all that have worked so hard behind the here. You know, I'm going to leave the stage before he gets up here. But let's let's give a welcome, a Brampton welcome, to an adopted Canadian, Pastor Brian Warren. Come on. What a blessing. Now, come on, give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Come on. Come on, if you love Jesus, give him some praise. Show him some love in this house. My God, my God, my God, I feel an anointing in this house. Oh, come on, somebody lift up those hands and shout glory. My God, I believe the glory is in this house. Hallelujah. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Yeah. Come on, touch five other people. Say, I believe it. 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 I believe it's in the house and it's transferring. I believe it's in this place and it's moving. I believe that it's strong enough to break every chain. I believe it's strong enough to heal everybody. I believe it is now moving in such a way that we're getting ready to go to a higher place. Are you ready to go up higher? Somebody say, I got to go higher. I got to go higher. Higher. Hey, my God, my God, my God. I feel it. You're going to make me preach in this house today. But you know what? I've got an assignment that's even higher than just preaching a word. Gentlemen, I got something that I really got to get off of my chest. I came here, and today I'm going to talk to you about cracked pots. I was talking to you earlier about how important it is to realize that God can turn a coward into a champion. Hallelujah. You heard Pastor Steve declare that there has to be a fresh faith in order for a fresh fire, in order for fresh fruit. But Moses said it this way. He said, if your presence does not go with us, God, bid us not to go. Oh, God. Man, the only way that we know that we've got fire when we leave this place is that there are other fires that are lit as yeah. a result of this Amen. place. Amen. Come on, don't get tired on me yet. Amen. Don't get tired on me yet. Don't get tired on me yet. Amen. Amen. But gentlemen, I'm going to talk to you about this a little, bit, a little bit more, but I've come here in a, a state of great brokenness. I'm not talking to you as a man that has it all together. I'm talking to you as one of daddy's boys. 
And I believe Daddy called the family meeting. You know, my dad went into the hospital. A lot of people say, don't take all of that. You don't have to shout. You don't have to do that. But if you've known what I've gone through, you know it'll take all of that. Mm-hmm. Won't slap the neighbor and say, it takes all of that. It takes all of that. My dad went into the hospital about a year ago. Loved my dad. He was baptized in the Holy Ghost at 80 years old. He ran from God for so long, but he stopped running. He's a golfer as well, because, you know, we, we love to golf. We spend a lot of time golfing. If you just bear with me for a second, I just want you to get this, because... When my dad went into the hospital, he was having a heart attack all day. And then he drove himself to the hospital. And the doctor said, you're in bad shape. We're going to have to operate right away. And he said, well, I've lived a good life, doc. And he said, "Um, I know where I'm going, so make sure you tee it high and let it fly. (laughs) That's my pop, you know. But he said, keep it down the fairway. And he went into that that surgery about a year ago. And uh, he came out of the surgery, but he had plaque in his arteries, so he went into a stroke. And he hasn't come out. He he actually was in it for six months. And the doctor said, we're going to have to take him. And you guys got to make some choices. My brother's a pastor as well. He said, well, doc, you're concerned about the quality of life. We're concerned about the breath of life. Mm-hmm. After six months, he came out of his, his coma, and they said it was a miracle. Hallelujah. I believe in the miracle power of God. But this year has been the greatest of years, and it's been the most challenging of years. Because although ministry is growing globally and I get an opportunity to do that. It's not as sexy as it seems because on the outside it's a lot of, it's a lot of quietness. It's a lot of isolation. It's a lot of time of, of just, just spending it with the Lord. And you want to be around brothers. So this is, my, my, this is my candy that I get a chance to just get with other brothers because there's no women here to share this moment and this is a fishbowl that nobody knows what we're going through. So we got to write it all down because when we leave here, there's no record. If you don't write it down, you'll never remember it. That God did that. That he gave you a, a fresh faith and a fresh fire. And he gave you fresh fruit. Well, right before Christmas this last year, my nephew, who I love dearly, he was murdered. And when he was murdered, he he was only 19 years old, and he was gunned down. And the assailant, they caught him a little bit later, he had a baby out of wedlock, and you know, so it was his his baby mama, and he was there. You know, we weren't raised that way, but this is what was going on. Can I be real with you? Come on. Can I be real with you? Come on, wave your hand like I can be real with you. Come on. So what ended up happening? The man wanted to kill everyone in the house, and Lemuel stood in the way. And you got to understand, my sister committed suicide. That's what called me into the ministry. That was my moment. That was my flashpoint that said, no longer live in my dreams, but there's heaven got a whole lot closer. And I said, for the rest of my days, I'm going to tell dying men and women, boys and girls, that the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I didn't know how to preach it. I just said, give me this Bible. I'm going to be the devil's worst enemy. Mm. Give me this Bible, Lord. I'm ready to preach this thing. I don't know how to do it, but I'm going to read it. I'm going to stand on it. Nobody had to tell me, you got to do this, you got to do that. Men are always making excuses saying you got to do this and you got to do that. No, you got to take that word. And it's either the biggest lie ever written or it's got to be the truth. Amen. Oh, come on. Somebody praise him if you believe it's the truth. If you believe it's the truth. Well, gentlemen. 
Lemuel wasn't the only one that died, but in Sandalwood Heights, just right over here, I had to bury two boys. James Ock and Ramey came from a great family, a pastor's family, and Kaylin Milben. Sandalwood Heights has taken at least six suicides in your area. I've been praying for this, this area, and that's why I accepted to come here, even knowing the schedule. Pastor Rob, he was very kind and he was very gentle because he didn't know, because a lot of people look at you, they see the glory, but they don't know the story. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. They don't know what you're going through. They don't know what's happening in your life. All they say is, no, just give me what I need. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. So I come here out of great brokenness. And we began to pray for those boys to the degree that I said, one day, Lord, we're going to get on the ground in Brampton and we're going to declare the Lord omnipotent reign. That's right. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. Amen. Come on, touch your neighbor and say, this is that day. 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 Amen. This is that day. There is a day that God sets. He said, he said, teach them to number their days that they would gain a heart of wisdom. That means no matter how long you've been in your situation, you just keep counting because if you know when you went in, you keep counting because there's a day when you're coming out. This Hallelujah. Is that in the day of my favor, I heard you. In the day of salvation, I helped you. This is the day of my favor. This is the day of salvation. But in order to do that, we need to make a resting place for God. We need to have a place where God himself will be honored. Because yes. God doesn't sit on furniture. The only furniture that Dios can sit on, in the nombre de Jesus, the only furniture is on the human heart. Amen? Amen. If you want the pines of the Hijo, the Spirit, the Santo, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it comes on the heart of man. But the reason why the Spirit of God is not lacking in miracles, but we as men have not answered the call of the unemployment sign in the church. Wow. There's too many unemployed men. You work, you work, so off to work you go. But you're trying to make ends meet and it's not meeting up. Because God said, take care of my house and I'll take care of your house. You say, how do I take care of God's house? The first order of business in the house of God is to honor what God honors. The Bible says something so powerful, and he says this, and in the book of Exodus, the Bible tells us in the 17th chapter, and it says this, when Moses went up the mountain to fight against the Amalekites, Remember I told you about the Amalekites? It's a spirit of an Amalekite that will come in to discourage you. It's a spirit of Amalekite that will come in when your harvest is at its strongest to come in and just snatch everything from you. But the Bible told Moses, he said, because they did the children of Israel wrong, he said, I want you to fight the Amalekites. I want you to fight the Amalekites. You see, you've been fighting a battle. You've been in a battle, but you've not been at war. You've been in a war, but you've not been at war. God is saying, now, men of God, it's wow. time for you to fight. Yes. It's time for you to turn yes. your plowshares yes. into swords and your pruning hooks into spears and let the weak say, I am strong. And the poor say, I am rich. Whatever you say I am to, the universe is listening. Wow. Mm. The next thing that comes, it's going to answer. Church, men, if you want to do business with daddy, if you want to get on talking terms with daddy, I don't know what your tradition is. I'm not here to talk about your tradition. God's bigger than your tradition. If you belong to God and I belong to God, we belong together. It's not about your denomination. It's not about your doctrine. Doctrine separates truth from error, but it should not separate from believer from believer. We came here to complete one another, not to compete with one another. We're better together than we ever are apart. God has one church, but it meets in many different places. 
tonight, man, and this, before I get started, there's some men in our sanctuary. They're full-time servants. The Bible says that they stand in the house of the Lord by day and by night. It said when the hands of Moses were up, it said the Israelites were winning. But when the hands of Moses got tired, it said the Amalekites were winning the battle. I believe the reason why this suicide is happening and this discouragement, which is an oxymoron because when we have been given courage, is courage is another name for the Ruah, which is the Holy Spirit, and we cannot lose what God has given because death cannot kill what will not die. Huh. But it can be arrested. It can be arrested. The Amalekites, because the hands are down, Pastors are building services and they're building people, but they're tired. Because while they're working, their family's under attack. And you wonder what's going on. You can't just be a, a man that comes as a Sunday Christian. You got to be a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. One that says that you can count me in, sign me up. My God, my God, when you begin to declare that, God meets you. But in order to do that, I don't want you in any way to trivialize this moment. Because Some of you, you've been scorning at the church, you've been mocking the church, all they do is talk about money, all they talk about is this, there's nothing but hypocrites there. But the problem is the church is not perfect, but it's in perfect process, and it begins to get corrupted as soon as you sit in the seat. Oh, my. Oh, that's good. <laughs> like begets like. Somebody say, preach, preacher. I'm doing the best I can. I'm going to ask the pastors to, who not only organize this, but those pastors that are in the sanctuary. You can't see them because they all look alike. We all look alike. But they're different. They stand in the house by day and by night. I thank God for the men that came with me because they know that I said I can't do this by myself. Nobody stands alone. No man is an island. Men in my house and, and those in God's house because it's not my church. It's his church. They pray for me. But I'm going to ask you all just take a seat really quickly and then I'm going to ask the pastors the full time service workers that are in the house who hold up those hands that you would allow us to honor you but don't clap just to give some platitudes and some vain things because they're smart because they, they know what it is to die by sheep bite a million stubby little teeth that just nub them to death. They know what it feels like. So they've seen it before. They've, walked, they've been in those meetings before. But pastors, I won't embarrass you, but I'm asking you, my brothers, because I need you, man. I can't do this by myself. Can't do television and pastor and all those other things without the help of the body of Christ. It's a holy handicap. God made us that way. We need each other. But if you're here, pastors, would you do me a favor? Would you stand to your feet so we could just acknowledge who you are? Those elders, those deacons, those, those that have been anointed with seven elders carry the gospel, that have a greater responsibility. Would you just stand to your feet if you're in the house so we can see you? Yeah. I told you they were in the house, man. They don't look a whole lot different because they try to dress down these days and put skinny jeans on. Brothers like me struggle with skinny jeans. <laughs> I ain't had nothing skinny since I was in the fifth grade. But the reality is, they do everything to win a soul. Because 
because they want to hear the words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done. They want to hear Colossians 4, 17 and say to our kippers, finish the work you've received in the Lord. Remember my chains. Uh-huh. But I need you to lift your hands up, Pastor. Would you lift your hands, please? Lift them high. Because the Bible says in Exodus 17, when the hands were up, the Amalekites were being defeated. Right now, just in the atmosphere, gentlemen, there is an anointing because God inhabits the praises of his people according to Psalms 22.3 that is defeating everything that is on your life because these hands are up right now. Hallelujah. You've just come under a canopy of grace because you're in the kingdom of God. You're in the realm of Christ, the rule of Christ, and the reign of Christ right now because of Calvary. Hallelujah. Because these hands are up. Those hands, look at the left hand. That's the hand that, that, that holds you when you're, you're struggling, that holds the end of the phone when you don't know which end to talk into. Look at the right hand. That's the one that calls and says, how are you and your wife doing? That's the one that is also saying, what God has put together, let no man put asunder. Oh, look at that left hand. That's the one that says, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord give it, the Lord take it. Blessed be the Lord. That's the one that'll go to your gravesite and wipe the tears off of your family's eyes. Look at them. But you see, these pastors, I told them to lift their arms up. Some of them have already started to droop because their shoulders are actually starting to burn a little bit. They're burning because they're carrying a burden that's bigger than they can carry. I'm not saying it because I, I'm just guessing it, but because I'm living it. The Bible said that there was, a, there, was a, there was an anointed group of men, and they were called Aaron and Hur. And it said that they took one hand and they went under one arm of Moses, and they took another hand and they went under the other arm of Moses, and they said, Moses, just a little bit of encouragement. It's the thing that softens the heart. They said, you're going to win this battle because God put you in that place. You're no different. It's level at the cross. But because you're in that place, we're going to hold up your arm. Bible said they put a rock underneath him and then he held his hands up until the break of day and they completely destroyed the Amalekites somebody say this is that day this is that day when we are counted if there are some hers in this house some errands in this house some priests and some, some businessmen that are walking in the city and said, God, I want you to bless my business. I want you to bless my family. So I'm going to bless what you bless. I'm not waiting for you to bless me, but I'm going to bless the Lord at all times and his praise will continually be in my mouth. The humble shall see thereof and be glad. If we got any errands in the house and any hers in the house, but don't do it unless you're serious, I want you to grab these hands of these pastors and let's pray for these men. Let's get on talking terms with that. Don't do it if you do, you really, unless you mean it, but I want you to make sure that they're not bearing the brunt of the weight, but you're, you're taking the weight off their shoulders. You're keeping those hands up. Hallelujah, Jesus. You see those arms, make sure both of them are suspended. Make sure it's not just one arm, but it's both arms. They've been waiting for somebody to come. They've been waiting for their help. When is the Calvary going to show up? But I need an anointing in this house, and I need you gently to take me there with an Agnes day, because worthy is the Lamb, the Lamb of God, the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Alpha, the Omega, the Death Slayer, the Peace Be Stiller, the one who was, is, and is to come. He's the one that we're calling on his anointing. One that stands between the lampstands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. He reigns in this house. He reigns. Lord God Almighty reign. Now 
pray for their wives. Pray for their children right now. Pray. Let them hear in their ears. Come on, man. Pray. Pray. Hallelujah. Pray for peace to come in their church. Hallelujah. Pray for strife to be broken off. Pray for God to now help them meet the budget in the name of Jesus. We're declaring that our, our children are not up for grabs. Our children will not, they will not die, but they'll live and declare the works yes. of the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. They will not die. Yes, God. Every young man in this house, every young lion in this house, every young soldier in this house. Come on, stretch out your hands now, man. Stretch out your hands to these young men. I need some pastors because God is now Kido Bosata. Put your hands on them. Let's lay hands on these young men. We're declaring our young families. I don't know where Adam was. He was silent. 
But Adam, the last Adam, was not silent. Oh, God, I will say, Canada. Come on, pray for them right now. Pray. If your son is not here, pray in proxy. Lay hands. But believe his mind is going to be restored today. Believe that the anointing of the Holy Ghost is going to come upon him. Believe for the fuego, the fire of God to come upon him today. Come on, come on, come on, come on. They know it. They know it. They know it. They know it. Oh, shit, it is. God, I'm asking you, please. Lord, the blood of the martyr is the seed of the church. The blood of the martyr is the seed of the church. The blood of the martyr is the seed of the church. Lord, for Lemuel. Lord, for James Akinwami. Lord, for Caitlin. Today, Lord, the men of God, the generals, oh God, yes. assemble. And we turn our plowshares into swords. Our pruning hooks into spears. We declare, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say I am with because of what the Lord has done for me. In the context of this anointing, God, pour out your spirit. God, bring revival in here. Bring it into Brampton. Bring it into Sandalwood Heights, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we repent, Lord, on cool Christianity. We repent, oh God, from idolatry. We repent as your people who are called by your name. We humble ourselves and pray. We seek your face, O oh God. We don't seek politics. We don't seek education. We don't seek policing, O oh God. We knock on the heaven. We knock on the doors of heaven today. Open up the windows of heaven, O oh God. Pour out your spirit. Every, every man in here, oh God, is a powerful instrument in your hands. Oh God, and Lord, we have an expectation that you have heard today, and our young men will now, oh hallelujah, hey God, We thank you that old men are getting inspired dreams. Young men are seeing vision. Holy Ghost. Male servants, maid servants, prophesying. Wings, eyes. He caught a bow. Sunday at a bow. Rebe. Whoa. Father, I thank you that these are the men from the meadow of the dance. And I declare there will be flocks of men in the house of God. As temple sheep, we thank you, Lord, that worship is released. A sound has been released in this house today. It's the sound of glory. It's the sound of heaven. Heaven on earth. And we thank you for it. Lord, would you seal it in our hearts? Would you fill us to overflow? We, oh God, would continue to keep the very vow that we have made to you today to serve you till we see you face to face. Hallelujah. Now hide me behind the cross, God. Let the self sit down. The spirit rise up one more time, God. I can't do it in myself. Lord, I need you, and you are our God, and we are your people. So as we sing this last bar, oh God, we sing it as free men, for whom the sun sets free, is free indeed. Hallelujah. Come on, men of God. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. He reigns. Let it rain in your house. Let it rain in your heart. Lift up those hands before the Lord. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. For the Lord.
Now everything is yes and amen in Jesus. So let the man of God in Jesus' name say a big amen. Amen. Now slap your neighbor and say, I believe it and I receive it. I believe it and I receive it. I Come on, sit down if you can. Sit down if you can. Thank you, worship team. Come on, give God some praise in this house again. Come on, give God some praise. Oh, no, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Oh, my, he goes for the Lord. Give God some praise in this house. Oh, live on. Give God the glory that is due to his name. We bless his wonderful name. He is our God. And we are his people. Oh, bless the Lord. Somebody say, I need is that. Man, I want to go right back to the word of God. I don't have a lot of time. In our course today, we've been able to hear, I believe, directly from heaven. And I want to take you into the last, excuse me, part of the book of Judges in the sixth chapter. And we're talking about Gideon. God turned a coward into a champion. And if God did it to Gideon, he can do it in our lives. You see, God specializes in changing difficult circumstances. Many times God allows us to go into difficult circumstances not because the giant is so great but God knows that if you believe that you can get yourself out of it you have no need for God. So therefore what God does many times is he allows a Goliath into your life that's not necessarily too big to fight. He's just too big to miss. <laughs> See, giants go down because God appoints it to be so. You might be in a giant of a situation but it doesn't matter what you're up against. God is greater. So it's important for us to listen up. Because if you have an ear in heaven, but also feet on the earth, you're going to accomplish a lot of things. In other words, we're not trying to be so heavenly minded that we're no earthly good. But what we are doing is making sure that we understand where our true identity is. It's all about our identity, but we also have to walk with integrity. Because when you start developing character, you can only rise as high as your character. You got as much as you can handle right now. If you had more, you'd hurt yourself. And God gave that to you because he knew where you would be at this moment in time because God knows the end from the very beginning. And I'm so glad that God waits until we get in a cracked situation before he comes and rescues us out. You know, when we look at Gideon, he had a lot of, an he had a lot of questions. But God had the answers for every question that Gideon was going through. You know, when I, was in, when I was in school, before I jump into that, there was a reader that we used to always read, and it was, um, it was named Dick and Jane. And they had a dog, and he was named, and some of you are old enough to remember, my goodness. <laughs> that just tells everybody who you are. <laughs> I want you to say the word spot. Say it again. Spot. Say it one more time. Spot. Now spell it. What do you do when you come to a green light? <laughs> now I know what kind of trouble we're in. <laughs> That's why the... <laughs> That's why the insurance is so high here in Brampton, I guess. <laughs> right. 
I want, I want one who, uh, who was actually pretty good with, we say, you know what, I, I, I get stuff like that. I love to work out things in my mind and, and little riddles like that. Somebody that's real good at one. Can you raise your hand? Yeah, none of you going to do that. No, no. <laughs> I didn't think I was getting a lot of takers on that one. <laughs> but is it just one? Is there one that dares to be brave? I said, I'll take it. Yeah, I, I love that, brother, because you're like, you could do this, brother. You could do this. You were touching your brother. You said, you can do this. And then brother even said, I guess I can. Nah, I guess I can. Well, come on over here. Come on over here. <laughs> okay. Now face everybody. What's your name, brother? Dennis. Dennis. Nice to meet you. What do you do for a living, Dennis? Construction. Construction? Engineering. Well, you got a strong handshake. I was just wondering because if, if, if I embarrass you or something, you might hit me. So I just wanted to. <laughs> I'm not going to take that chance. Okay. <laughs> That's actually a very smart idea. <laughs> I still break bones. You know, my job description on the football field, and I'm not so saved that I can't have a flashback, was hit people, cause pain, extreme difficulty, thinking and walking, and I enjoyed my job. <laughs> The Bible says, whatever you do, do it to, to the glory of God. I made daddy proud. <laughs> anyway, somebody said, come back. Okay. <laughs> Dennis, yes. why don't you stand up there? Now, I want you guys to also understand the rules of engagement, that jeopardy is a whole lot easier when you're at home. <laughs> so that means... Please don't feed Dennis the answers. <laughs> Just let Dennis work and then cheer for him like you do on the TV when Alex is on. <laughs> Especially you crossword junkies. Turn that way, Dennis. I want you to spell some simple words. I'm not going to, to uh, I'm, I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to show you something, what happens in our brains if we don't really understand that it's a, it's a work of grace that, that, that turns it around. Would you spell, would you spell for me and tell me what that is? M-A-C-D-O-N-A-L-D. What is that word? You don't have to do it out loud. I mean, you just did that in class. Just tell me what it is. Okay, here, I'm going to say it again. Listen, Dennis. Are you focused? Stay focused. M-A-C-D-O-N-A-L-D. Oh, yeah. Come on, give him a big hand. Come on, give him a hand. Wow. That's good. You see, your, your, your buddy over there is saying, man, you represent well over there. Go ahead, Dennis. You can win, you can win. Yeah. Now, next word, Dennis. You ready? It's just simple phrases. I'm not going to try to complicate it. M A C B R I D E. Come on, you, gotta, you, gotta, you can't talk to yourself, Dennis. That's crazy. I can't see it in my mind. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. You got to say it. Come on, just come on, Dennis. M A C. I, I told you I'm not going to embarrass you. B R I D E. McBride. Oh, you heard your buddy over there. You can't do that now. McBride. Okay. McBride. Okay. I heard somebody. Over there. It's Mac. Come on, everybody, give him a hand. Okay. That's the. That's the. This is the last one because that's the. That's the Jeopardy music. This is Here it comes. One. Are you ready for it, Dennis? Thank I you. Am. Thank you. Go ahead and help me out. I am. All right, it's it. M A C H I N E S. What's the last two? What's the last two letters? Yeah, listen here. M A C H I N E S. H I N E S. Let me see. H I. Don't do that to me. <laughs> Come on. M A C 
H-I-N-E-S. Dennis, I'm going to have to go on. I don't have that much time. I, I, I just can't put it in my mind together. Okay, I know. You, you're having a brain cramp right here, Dennis. M-S-C-H-I-N-E-S. H-I-N-E-S. H-I-N-E-S. This is a senior moment, Dennis. Uh, it's past the senior moment. <laughs> M-A-C. M-A-C-H-I-N-E-S. M-A-C-H-I-N-E-S. Yes. Machines. Machines. Come on, give me a big hand. Thank you. Did you notice how Dennis, even as he wanted to, and he was in the right place to, he had to battle to just understand what those words were? At first, I heard a couple people calling it McHines. <laughs> I told you, that tells me why the education system in... <laughs> but he got it, machines. Because when you go through a process like we've gone through today, what you need more than anything else is you cannot go through the process by yourself. Change happens in a moment, but it takes place over a process. You can't just come into one conference and expect everything to be changed when you leave and go back. you got to have accountability. As iron sharpens iron, so shall one sharpen another. It's important that you say this with me. I can't stand alone. <laughs> Say it again. I can't stand alone. I can't stand alone. Because no man is an island and he needs other brothers around him in order to fulfill the call of God inside of him. Right. Young men, you've got to get this right now early because it's been said that, you know, big boys don't cry and big boys do this and big boys do that. I remember when Barbara Walters was interviewing Norman Schwarzkopf and you know she loves to throw those things in, those little barbs when she gets people sort of just like we did our brother here. And then all of a sudden she said to him, I saw you crying after Desert Storm. What was that? And Norman Schwarzkopf said something that was so powerful. He said, I can't trust a man that can't cry. And she said, what do you mean? She said, I don't understand that. He said, you don't know. I have to sign the order to send boys into harm's way. And I am not going to allow someone else to go to their mother and tell them that your son paid the highest or your daughter paid the highest price for freedom. I do it myself. So I cry. Many of us have been struggling in that area. And so what we end up doing is we struggle with having affairs and everything else because this is how we are with our wives but this is how we are with those people that we believe we could share who we really are. We take off the mask, the facade. So what we've got to do is we've got to disarm even those things in our mind that we had come to the altar in the early part as far as purity and realize that the enemy is looking for a scalp and he wants to take your head. Many of you, you might as well just say, Woo! on the count of three because it was that close before you got here that you were almost the next victim. On the count of three, you just do it. Nobody knows who you are. One, two, three. Yeah. Because the reality is we're all about a hair's breadth away, one step away from those areas without God. There but by the grace of God go we. Amen. Not because of our great strength or our great intellect or our wisdom, but by the grace of God. So what I discovered as we look at the Bible, watch what it, what it says here. Because when God tells Gideon that I'm going to make you into a mighty man, Gideon starts a process with God. And he literally sees the angel of the Lord and he says, he made an offering and an altar and said, Jehovah Shalom. He tears down this, this altar but then God tells him, he says, Gideon, what I need you to do is I need you to call the men together. And then once you call the men together, he said, Gideon, I need you to send some men home. What does that mean? Well, brothers, the reality, all of us ain't going to get to the party. Because some of us, the 10-10-80 principle says it this way. 
10% of the people, as soon as I got up here, you guys said, I'm going whatever he says. I've seen this brother on TV. That's the black guy on 700 Club and 100 Huntley Street, and I just know there's an anointing on his life. 10% of you said, no matter what is said today, it's not going to change me because I've made up my mind. So no matter what I say, M-A-C-H-I-N-E-S, you're just going to keep saying, Mick Hines, Mick Hines, Mick Hines. <laughs> but 80% of you in the context of a small group are going to be changed for eternity. That's the 10 10 80 principle, gentlemen. Why is that important? Because God called you for more than just sitting down and watching. He's called you to the great adventure. He's called you to something that is so much more. This is God's process, though. And I want you to take a look at this with me as well. Because when we get to the sixth verse of the seventh chapter, let me start at the fifth verse. Let me start at the fourth verse. It's all good. The Lord said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Bring them down to the water, and I will test them for you there. Then it will be that whom I say to you, this one shall go with you, the same shall go with you. Whomever I say to you, this one shall not go with you, the same shall not go with you. Now, I, I want to stop here for a second because this is very important in Scripture. Because God wants all of us and every one of us to actually succeed. He wants us to prosper. The Bible said that you would prosper even as your soul prospers. But the reality, when we're stuck in our own ruts, we're not on the path that God calls us to. So we're not even walking with a fresh faith or even with a fresh fire or a fresh fruit. But what we're doing is doing some sin management, just moving some stuff around while we're in this conference and then going back and thinking that I'm going to be different because I did some management on my life, but I never really got transformed. Because your transformation is not about you performing, but it's what God is going to perform inside of you. But what God wants you to start is the great journey. The Bible says in Psalms 84 that they that set their heart on pilgrimage. Somebody say, set your heart. Somebody say, set your heart. That's like setting your GPS, your God positioning system. Those that set their heart on pilgrimage, though they go through the valley of Baker, it's going to turn into a pool of refreshing. Though they go through the valley of weeping, it's going to turn into a pool of refreshing. That means that no matter what you go through, it's going to turn out for your good. Somebody say, it's working for my good. You see, this is so important because when you realize that, now you're looking at things from a God perspective and not from a limited perspective. Amen? You see, this is so powerful because once you understand that, you say, there is nothing that I can't accomplish with God. God in me and me and God, there's nothing we can't do. Because he has the power to do it and to bring it forth. You don't have the power to do it. God has the power to do it. You by yourself, chances of succeeding, low. God, high. You, low. God, high. Everybody say, me. God, high. You, low. Nah, God, <laughs> I think you got it. You see, this is so important because God said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to separate those people. And I'm going to tell those to go home who are not really sold out for this. Because he said, they're going to brag about it was them and they're going to touch or scratch the glory of God. You see, you've got to work out your soul salvation within the context of a group of men. You've got to become a disciple of Christ today. Some of you are, 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 are baby Christians, but you've been a baby Christian forever. You stepped up to the aisle and said, oh, I don't want to be crying and doing that, but I'm just the one crying. Oh, here I come. And then the next thing you know, some of you are just mad right now because they promised you this was going to happen, that was going to happen, and they didn't tell you the conflict that was going to come. But you've got conflict. Some of you are going back to conflict. You're saying, how's a conference like this going to help me with my conflict? Well, that conference is going to help you because you had a meeting with God and you're going to keep your vow you're going to get a quiet time with God you see that's what the water was all about he said bring them down to the water the water in the scripture is a symbol of the Holy Spirit God said I've got to bring you to the Holy Spirit I've got to bring you down to the water I've got to bring you to the place the water of the word of God that's going to wash you from those impurities because what God does is contrary to the way man does God is a perfect steward so what he does if he's going to change your life he doesn't just take this water let me ask you a question 
You guys are really smart guys. If there was a glass of water and it had just a little bit of poo-poo in the bottom of the water, <laughs> would you drink it? If you're thirsty, come on, come on. Come on, you thirsty guys. Just a little bit of doo-doo in the bottom. <laughs> would you drink it, Bramptonites? <laughs> Who would drink it? Come on, raise your hand. I'm thirsty. I'm not giving you a filtration system. We got a few. Now watch this. I'm now that I got the few. Now that little bit of doo-doo that I take, if I put a little stir up and stir it around, <laughs> would you still drink it? I, I just put a, a spoon in it to stir it up, just to get it all. Okay. Bottled water at its best. <laughs> that brother's from Duck Dynasty, so bless him. <laughs> I just love that. Anybody else? Come on, come on, place your hand. Oh, yeah. But the reality, if you wanted to get that water clean, it's contrary to the way God do it. How many of you would just throw that water out and start with some fresh water? Raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. All right. See, Pastor, see, you, 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 you're a smart one. But you see, God's process is taking a bigger picture and using a smaller picture, which is you and me, and pouring himself into you, and there's much more of God than there is of you, but you cannot contain the glory of God, but you're a carrier and a courier of the kingdom of God. So that means when God pours himself into you, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, he keeps pouring himself into me until he flushes all the impurities out of me and he brings the out of that which is in me out of me that that which is out of me becomes in me because the enemy that's in me is the enemy that I'm fighting against. My greatest enemy is the enemy in me. It's not the enemy outside of me, but the enemy in me. And if you can't fight the enemy enemy, you can never face the enemy out of you. Oh, my God. Maybe you guys missed what I said. So what God does is he clothes himself in your earthly suit. But he does it through a process. He said, bring them to the water. And he said, and then get them to kneel down. And he said, the ones that just go like this because they're just thirsty, they'll drink anything. They're hillbillies. He said, send them home. But the ones that are going to lap like a dog. He said, those are fighting men. Because those are watching men. Those men are the men that I'm going to use to win an unconventional battle. Not the battle of Thermopylae with the battle of the 300 and Leonidas who fought the wolf and used leverage to his advantage. I love that because, yes, he was using something that was so powerful, he used the wolf against him. And then when he was coming against Xerxes, he used the same power against Xerxes because he understood the process and also the very, the very strategy of war. He knew what war was all about. The Romans did this against Boudicus. Boudicus came with one of the greatest armies of people. And this was a woman who came in England who was going to take over and removed the Roman Empire. But just one legion of Romans came, and they said, let's get into the position then. And they did something called this position of the pyramid. What it was is all these men would get shoulder to shoulder, chest to chest. And as soon as the enemy would come, they would drive the enemy into a small area. Instead of fighting everyone at the same time, when the enemy came at them, they'd use their strength against them, but they'd wait for the call to push. And then they would push, push, push. And what they were able to do is kill all of the uprising 
with strategy. Somebody say strategy. You got to have a strategy. What's your strategy? Because if you don't have a strategy, you plan on failing. No man ever plans to fail, but they fail to plan. And if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Somebody say amen. amen. God gave them a strategy. This was a God strategy. This book is 66 books of seed, 66 books of sword, every one of these books. And the only place that these swords can operate is in the human heart. That's why you got to have some lunch bucket Christianity before you leave out of this place. Eat, sleep, drink the word of God. My God, you got to get into the word of God. You got to get a word for your situation and your, your circumstance. Because you don't need to judge according to the circumstance. You just need to confess, I am blessed. Why? Watch this. Because it's not the money or also the finances or, 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 or the, the, the favor and everything that's going to make you blessed. But it's your relationship with God that's going to make you blessed. That's what blesses you. Come on, say this with me. I do not judge according to the circumstances. I confess. I am blessed. Now, if you have God inside of you, nothing is broken until something is spoken. You got to speak that over your life. Speak it over your family. Speak it over your circumstance situation. Get a word for your circumstance. Speak it every day. Begin to declare it. Decree it. Call it so. We're the only uh, beings that actually have the power of speech. We can call things that are not as though they were because we have a God quality, because we got God living inside of us. Are you with me? Are you with me? Come on, wave your hand if you're still with me. All right, I'm almost done. I got to get to this word, though. You see, I find that what God is doing with you today is he's working something out in the hearts of all of us, and it's coming just like I told you. In the area that God has been dealing with me, and it's the area of brokenness. The brokenness is causing greater glory to come out of my life than I ever could see in any other way. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy, but on my best friend, I would tell him you cannot miss this. This class. You see, God puts you in a class. He cannot get you out of certain stuff because that class that you're in right now, man, that class that you're in, brother, that class, he's sitting on the outside until you put your pencil down. When you put your pencil down, now the teacher comes in. But you see, your marks are his marks. So therefore, what he's doing is he's cheering you on because he gave you the Holy Spirit. He gave you the word of God. He gave you the weapons of our warfare, not of this world, but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, the casting down of arguments, and every high thing that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. Somebody say amen. Amen. So God gave you the tools. But you say, what operates these tools? Brokenness. Look at this, the 19th verse. Brokenness exposes light, brothers. It exposes revelation. The Bible says, so Gideon and the hundred men who were with him, because there were 300, and they were all told when the other people drop and go home, you take up their trumpet, take up their food, take up their provisions. Did you see that? This is the first place where God now says, for every battle that you face, he will provide for your needs. My God. This is where Jehovah Jireh, God your provider, begins to show up. When you answer the call of duty, reporting for duty, the provisions come. God said, I got a provision for every vision that I have given. Amen? If it's, if, it's for your, it's, if it's for your latter days, is it, if it's for your business, for all the businessmen in here, God has a provision for every vision that he gives. My God. You see, this is so important, man, because brokenness reveals. The Bible says in this moment, they blew the trumpet and broke the pictures that were in their hands. Now, this I got from the Middle East, and this is how they made pictures, but also lamps. And what was happening, every man had a picture And every man had a trumpet, and every man, you see, this was an unorthodox battle strategy. Only God can win a battle like this. Somebody say, only God. God. I mean, who can think up anything like that? God said, I want you to take a torch, and I want you to take that torch, just like this is, and I want you to put the torch inside the lamp, inside of the pitcher. Now, you see the way this is made. You make Heinz people. (laughs) Um, if 
I put a, if I put a lamp inside of this, a show of hands, how many believe that you can see the light? Well, that's a good sign. You guys have grown since that point, you know? <laughs> but how do you think the light is going to come out through this? You got to break it. You got to be broken. Because brokenness, when this is broken, and now when I put this back together and I put a light in it, where do you see the light the most? Ah, God uses cracked pots. You see, everybody believes the conspiracy theory, but I want you to understand it today. Humpty Dumpty was pushed. <laughs> you heard it here. You see, the reality is this. Humpty had a vision, and Humpty was sitting on the wall for too long, and all the king's horses and couldn't put Humpty together again. But how come they didn't ask the king? Touch the name and say, Humpty was pushed. <laughs> I'm not going to stay there because I got to get on time. But the reality is when God gives you a vision, he's not going to stop with you until it's fulfilled the way he has given it. Many of you men have been running from the call of God. You've been running. And I don't care if you try to be like Hussein Bolt. You can eat all the yams you want and all the Gatorade you drink. <laughs> the call of God is irresistible and irrevocable. When you fight against God, you can't win. But when you fight with God, you can't lose. My God. You see, this is so important because watch this. The torches of Gideon's army were lit, but the flame could not be seen. Once the clay pitcher was broken, the flame was exposed into the darkness, diffusing it. And we need to ask ourselves, what needs to be broken in me for the flame of God when I leave here to shine out? We got to remember, anything that's not, that's, is unsubmitted, unfulfilled, earthly human desire is bait for darkness and for Satan. He's got legal access to that area. And we need the light to reveal to us our need for God. But remember, we're most like Satan when we rebel because it is ultimately a lie and we're rebelling against God. First Samuel says it this way, 1523, for rebellion as is the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as iniquity, the iniquity of idolatry. A lot of you brothers just saying, no, I'm just a tough businessman. Or no, I just have questions and everything. No, you're just stubborn. Your wife knows you're stubborn. Your mama knows you're stubborn. Your family knows you're stubborn. Brothers next to you know you're stubborn. I mean, my God, it's like bad breath. You're the last one to know it. <laughs> but why don't we stop with this coolness and say, God, I'm ready to do business with you? Why don't we just start, stop, stop the plan and say, God, I'll go where you want me to go. Do what you want me to do and be what you want me to be. Because what I've discovered about brokenness, man, brokenness produces life. John 12, 24 says, unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, if it dies, there's a big if there. If it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. Only when a seed is broken and in contact with the ground do I discover the hidden potential of the seed. So the reality is, unless you've got a seed in the ground, that seed is your, it's your seal that I'm not leaving here because I'm waiting for something to come up. This day, you put your head on the ground. You made a de declaration that my rear guard is going to push me. But that seed is going to take time to grow. It's not going to grow overnight. It's going to grow in a process. Many of us go to church, and we think it's optional, and we begin to praise God, and it's, it's because it's optional that it's optional on our parents or on our, our, our children and our wives and everyone else. 
It's been said, if a mother's the first one to go to church, just go to church. It, there will be at least, listen to this, there will be a 47, maybe 37% chance that her family's going to follow in her faith. If she's going to accept Jesus Christ, that means there's a 60% chance. But if a father is just the first one to go to church and be a church goer, 75, 71% of the time his family will follow in his faith. God has such a high mandate on men. If a child doesn't come to the Lord between the ages of birth and, and 12, birth and 12, 47% likelihood. The Bible makes it very clear. Lead a child in the way that they should go. When they come of age, they will not depart. When they get to the age of 16, it drops to somewhere like 4%. After 22, it goes to about 6%. But the most fertile time to raise a child is the time between birth and 11 years old. Man, you've got far more power than you know. You don't realize that you are an example regardless if you know it or not. That child cannot raise himself. God put you and made you a man for a reason. But brokenness, brokenness reveals light. It begins to say, I got a responsibility. I got a job. But then it begins to give you a brokenness, begins to expose a, a, a spirit of life that begins to come forth. The life is going to flow. Men, as soon as you come to the Lord and you, you come to him, now you're connected with the Zoe kind of life. I'm not talking about the bios, like biology, but I'm talking about the Zoe. There's a cord that connects to God from you to God, and then the next thing that happens, life begins to flow. You don't see it all automatic, but God just keeps flushing himself, just like pouring that poo-poo out. He begins to flow inside of you, and then all of a sudden, you say poo-poo, it begins to show itself. There will be a demonstration and a manifestation of the glory of God. But watch this. As soon as you break off and you said, I'm getting out of God, I, I'm doing things my own way. I'm going to be Frank Sinatra. I did things. Oh, come on, finish the sentence for me. As soon as you do that, you're going to take yourself out of the dark and you're going to start moving like this. But guess what's going to happen? Nothing all at once. But the longer you're away, just like my iPod, the longer this, this wonderful this wonderful technology, it's not connected to the dock, but it's showing me how much life I've got in my battery. The longer this is away from the dock, pretty soon I'm going to have a $1,000 technology, but it has no power. I can't get wireless service. I can't talk to anyone. I can't receive emails. I can't receive anything. Because I'm not connected to the source. God gave you the greatest technology, but you got to connect it to the source. You see, because what I learned, man, a long time ago, brokenness releases love. That's the source. Mark 14, 3 says, and begin in Bethany, beginning at the, the house of Bethany, Simon the leper as he sat at the table, a woman came to him with an alabaster flask with very costly oil, a spicknard, and she broke the flask and poured it on his head. You're going to hear about that during Easter. People are going to be talking about this because they said, wherever this is preached, this woman's going to also be preached. This week coming in, tomorrow is going to be Palm Sunday. Oh, thank you. It wasn't the microphone. I'm going to drink some water. It doesn't have any poo-poo in it, though. <laughs> Tomorrow's Palm Sunday. It's the time when we begin to say, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. And, 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 and God loves worshipers, worshipers, those that worship him. All of you need to be in the house of God tomorrow. If you don't have a church, you got to find a church. you got to talk to a brother before you leave and say, man, would you go to church? Because I need to get plugged in. I've been out of the dock too long. But don't worry about being called. Names about, oh, you a flunky, you one of those guys. They've been talking about you anyway. Why don't you give them something to talk about? Tomorrow, wouldn't it be great if all of you, when the pastors gave the altar call, you said, I'm recommitting myself to Jesus. That you began to get out of those. I'm telling you, 
my God, the pastors themselves are going to probably have a heart attack, and your wives, nonetheless, I mean, your kids are going to just go, their, their teeth going to fall out. <laughs> my daddy. They say there's revival happening in Brampton. Because you men didn't just give lip service, but you actually put something behind it. I'm challenging you to do that. Every man in this house. The only way you know you had fire is not, you see, because when we did the first thing, when we first started all this stuff, can, can you guys give me a little time with this? Just a little time? Okay. When we first got through revival, everybody was washing everybody's feet, and it was almost like find a black man and wash his feet. Because they wanted to show their, their, their affection. So, so many people were washing my feet. And it seemed like in the whole service, I was the only one with dirty feet. Because <laughs> everybody wanted to demonstrate reconciliation. But I got to the point, because I started asking God, I said, are my feet that dirty or am I just out of, out, of, out of step or something? Not that I didn't enjoy the spa treatment, come on now. But the reality of what I was doing is I was saying, Lord, because I'm... I've got First Nation Cherokee and Blackfoot. Everybody say, I got black feet. Yeah, you're right. I got black feet. <laughs> but I said, how do I deal with this? He said, tell them when they come to you, you're not the one they need to reconcile with, but it's the man in their neighborhood that looks like you. It's lip service as long as they're in the conference. But when they go down the street and they see that guy, that knows them in their neighborhood. And they say, man, I'm sorry. And he said, for what? I've, I've judged you for a long time. Brokenness releases love. Love is the ultimate warrior. Against love, there is no defense. You don't have any enemies when you got the love of God. Because God fights your battles. For the battle is not the Lord. Not the, yours, but the Lord's. Somebody say amen. amen. Brokenness also, the last thing, man, not only does it release love, but it releases and activates multiplication. It multiplies when brokenness begins to happen. That's why God has to break you. Because whoever God loves greatly, God breaks dearly. You see, this brokenness, and a lot of you, you're like, I'm just giving you a four-letter word. That's why I let you shout in the first session. I knew in the second session, I'm not going to throw the pie in your face to serve you a slice, but I got to tell you the truth. If you're going to leave out of here with the power of God moving in you. The reality is this, that Matthew 15, 36 says, and he took seven loaves and fish and gave thanks and broke them and gave them to his disciples. And his disciples gave them to the people. To multi he, he multiplied and he gave it to the multitudes. When we allow God to break us, man, just like this torch, the light begins to diffuse out, but then we put a torch to our mouth, we get a worship, and a worshiping man that pays worship to God. You see, Babylon is listening for the sound. The children of Israel, the Bible says that in that, that 137th and second verse, it said, the Babylonians taunted them, sing to us one of the songs of Zion. The Israelites prayed and said this, how can we sing the songs of Zion in a foreign land? Because God is the same God in that land that he's in this land. But he's just looking for worshipers. I remember when I was so bound up when I was playing professional football, that 500-pound bench and 670-pound squats. I couldn't come in here. I'd be like a lot of you guys. They say, raise your hands. I'm raising my hands right now. You just can't see it. <laughs> and in worship, I was a pocket puncher. That's how I worship. Just like you. And then somebody would look at me like, I'm like, what? I was always with an edge on my shoulder. And then the Lord gave me public accountability. I remember when I was on Huntley Street for a little while. Someone would look at me, and I'd say, and they say, I just love when I see you on television. I'm like, oh, is that right? Thank you, praise God. 
You know, public accountability can really cause you to get your act together. That's why you got to tell somebody, you got to write down what you've done in this conference. I want you to write something down on your paper right now. Those of you who are left-handed, would you raise your hand so I can see the left-handed men in the house? Okay. You left-handed men, I want you to write with your right hand. All you right-handed men, I want you to write with your left hand. Get a piece of paper or in your Bible. And this is what I want you to write. Philippians 4.13. Come on, I need you to write it on a piece of paper. And I'm going to give you a time limit. Let me just get my, get my, my stopwatch. All right? All right? All right, there you go. There you go. Now, when I, when I tell you, I want you to write, I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. Come on, everybody's got to do this. You got to do this too. You're looking at me. You're not, you're not writing. Come on, wave at me. Can you see? Most people don't know the, the truth of this because, yeah, you, the brother with the, yeah, that's him. You just turned around. Yeah, yeah you, you, yeah. Okay, he's looking for a pen. See, I had to shame you to make you write. <laughs> I'll do whatever I have to do to get the point across. <laughs> but I want you to write this. You're not writing? You don't have any pen? Here, let me give you my pen. You got a pen? All right. Now I want you to write this. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. And I want you to do this on the count when I tell you. One, two, three, go. And when you've done, I want you to lift up your hand. I want you to lift it up when I know you've done that. This is with your opposite hand. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. You're lucky you're on that, 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 <laughs> that keyboard. <laughs> all right, there's one. That's the first one. Man, you fast. Two, three. Got some pastors. Represent them, brothers. All right. There's another one. Go ahead. I see him. Pop, 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 popcorn anointing. Pop, pop, pop. That's the Steve. I thought you were going ahead of everybody. I was, I was wrong. Now, the one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Oh, yeah. I see him. I got him. Oh, yeah. Glory to God. Glory. Yeah. That only took you only about a minute and a half, but two, two minutes. Come on. We got a few more. Come on, slow pokes. Get it done. Opposite hand. Did you write the verse two, Philippians 4.13? Okay, I just wanted to make sure you did it all because some of you just probably, I can do all things through Christ. I don't know where it is, but I can do it. All right, now stop. Stop, stop, stop. Everybody else, you, you, you just, you're going to have to do this at home. You men have been using only half of your potential because what you've been doing is using the hand that you're used to but God says, when you give me that hand and you give me the other hand, I can make a miracle out of you. You don't understand. Most of us just use one hand. We use one part of our body. We fight with one hand. But God says, when you put both of those hands together, that's what worship is all about. Because it shows you that God is in control. God is where the power comes from. No man rises higher than when he's on his knees. Because the priests used to have to carry the ark on their shoulders. That nothing could be higher than the ark of God. So that's so important that we understand because it can't be brought in on a new cart. It's got to be carried there. The way you communicate with the ancient of days is in the ancient of ways. You got to pray. Your prayer life has to go up. Somebody say prep. Somebody say prep. prep. If you're going to be successful, you got to pray. Write that down. You got to read the word of God daily. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. But then after you get that, brother, you ain't writing down. You ain't going to remember a word. He's like, ah, <laughs> I'm watching you. You got to read, but then you got to exercise. Somebody say exercise. No, no. Somebody say exercise. You see, bodily exercise profit a little, but spiritual exercise much. You see, this is so important because when you begin to exercise that, God uses the enemy against the enemy. So whatever was now battling you, the enemy that was out of you, becomes your rock that comes against the enemy. 
If you want to see what your ministry is, see what's been fighting you the most. Because the greater the adversity, the greater the reward. On the other side of that, God puts your stuff on the other side of the fence. Because he wants you to go past that threshold and keep on going. Many of you would stop on this side if you did get everything that you wanted. But God put it on the other side. If it's a, if it's a perfect marriage, it's on the other side. If it's, a, it's, if, it's, if it's freedom in your life, it's on the other side. But you got to serve God because you've been saved to serve. But today I'm getting ready to stop here. It's been fun with you. I've had a wonderful time. You got to get rid of the past and get out of the rearview mirror. Forgetting about what is behind, I press forward towards the mark. It's been good on this mountain, but eagles cannot eat in the sky. They got to come down to the ground. And after we leave this place, if you don't write it down, you won't remember it. But the next conference, you need to be bringing somebody else. You should not just be bringing yourself. Because if friends don't let friends drive drunk, friends don't let friends go to hell either. And if God lifted you up, you got an obligation to lift him up. The Lord said he was going to release peace this weekend. Do you feel it in the place? Come on, feel it. You sense that peace? Come on, wave your hand if you sense that peace. Yes, 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 yes. There has been a peace that's been released. Because that's the glory. That's the power in Canada. Because we're the country of peace. He is the king, the creator of peace. That's the anointing that's in this house. There's only one thing that I'm going to ask you to do as we close out. I believe our anthem during this time has been like never before. Oh, my soul, I will bless the Lord. If you'd sing that, and I pray that it would echo in your spirit and it would never stop. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. <laughs> oh, my soul. In all that is within me, bless his holy name. My God, as the worship team begins to come forward, don't anybody else move. But if you're saying Sunday morning, I'm going back, and I'm not going to take the wheel back, but what I'm going to do is I'm saying I'm going to move into my role because the Bible says the greatest of them will be a servant. So if you want to be great, the way up is the way down. You're going to have to serve your home. You're going to have to serve your church. You're going to have to serve. You're going to have to get that help wanted sign out, and you're going to have to actually start doing something. You've been waiting to be served. You've been looking for somebody to do something for you. Guaranteed, if you outserve your family, I guarantee God is going to bless you because he's going to give you the provision for your vision. I've been married 28 years. It's the only relationship you fall in and out of love with the same person over and over again for the rest of your life. The road is never smooth and it's hardly ever straight. But the Lord on our side, we can. Oh, somebody say amen. amen. There's some men in this house. You got you got one more opportunity to say, God, I'm going to get right with you. In the todo poderoso de Jesus, in the all-powerful name of Jesus. This is such a wonderful conference because I don't know about Pastor Steve Fleming, but I know he's such a wonderful brother, and I just love his gifting. And I, I thank God that he allowed us to come together and Maybe you guys invite me back again. Maybe I didn't insult you too much. But if I did, too bad. Amen. Because I don't mean no harm by it, but I do mean that we have to walk with some very straight truth. We need straight talk. Come on, give me a big amen. Amen. So, this is the call. If you're saying, I'm going to walk up and I'm going to say, Pastor, church I recommitted myself pray for me I don't know how I'm going to make it but I need your prayers with God's strength I can I'm not perfect but I'm in perfect process because I don't judge according to the circumstances but I confess that I am blessed amen, amen. remember God is going to use your weakness and make it into your strength because that weakness is made perfect by the grace of God that I boast of my infirmity that the power of Christ would rest upon me. Not that I've already attained it, but I'm being immovable and steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord, 
knowing my labor is not in vain. Today, make sure you get with some brothers and get in a small group as well. Start the process. You will arrive. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to be the, a king in the tent of wickedness. And no good thing will he withhold to those whose heart is upright before him. It's not what man says, it's what God says. Amen? Amen. Praise God. He's the author and the finisher of your faith, brother. And he's written a great ending for you. I feel good about this. And when you see me on television, don't go to the refrigerator. You laugh too hard. But pray for me, amen? I'll pray for you. If you're saying, I'm going to do that, I'm answering the challenge. This holy week, starting on Palm Sunday, I'm writing it down. I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. I don't know how, but I know who. If that's you, you stand up to your feet. I don't think we'll have enough room at the altar for those dedications. But if you're going to do that in your church, and you're going to be a man that says, this coward was once a coward, he's now a champion. I was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I'm found. If that's you, and you're saying, I'm going to de declare it publicly, you stand up to your feet right now. All over this church. Praise God. Praise God. Pastor Steve, maybe you'll join me. You got a sweet voice. I love the gifts of God, and you know I love to worship too. But I'd love us to just close this time out. I want to thank the pastors for inviting us. What a privilege for the servant leader. Pastor Randy, God bless you. Powerful prayer warrior. Pastor Rob, you guys, uh, you're somebody. And my brother, you're so funny. Come on, brother. Let's just join hands and you pray and then I'll close. We'll pray over these men because I believe the Lord called us for such a time as this in order to, out of the, out of the workshop of life, out of our lives, to give a word in season. Did you receive it today? You started our closing. Father, we thank you for each one of the men here in this place. And Father, you know the decisions and choices that have already been made today. Yes. Determination that they want to be who you've called them to be. To do what you've called them to do. Thank you, Father, for the word that has been written in the hearts Amen. today, Father. Hearts of flesh. Father, you've taken out hearts that are hard and you replace it with a heart that can hear you, can respond to you. David said, your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. May that word Amen. guard their heart. May that word direct their steps. May that word be fresh and bring forth fresh fruit in their lives, in their relationships, in their families, in their churches, in their workplaces. Father, may they sense their anointing for marketplace. Amen. May the Lord help them to understand, Father, that you've called them not only for such a time, but for such a place, right where you've placed them, right where you've set them, Father. Hallelujah. Their place of great influence and impact in a place of greatest grace. May they see it so, Father, in their lives, we pray. And Father, you have allowed us to listen up, strip down, but now let us take up our mantle and our masculines, Lord, calling as men. And I pray, as Moses and Aaron were commanded to pray over the children of Israel, and I pray that you would raise up God men in every sphere of influence and that you would allow us to reclaim the mountains of justice of education Lord that you would allow us of entertainment and you would allow us to claim oh God as these missionaries go back into these areas Lord of community Lord bless us now keep us Lord make your face shine upon us and be gracious to us lift up the light of your countenance your favor upon us oh God for favor is not fair. For it comes not to men of skill, but it's to those that 
God gives. And God, we pray that as you lift up the light of your countenance, you would cause your shalom, your peace, oh God, that surpasses all understanding to now rest, rule, and abide. For it's the name of Yeshua HaMashiach Elohim. We give all the glory. Who's able to do all things but fail. To him be the glory in your church. To all generations. Against retaliation on your faith, family, finances, and the favor on your life. And the things that are dear in your heart, we pray. It's in Jesus' name we fan the flame. And the men of God, in Jesus' name, said. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.